YouTuber Scoot asked for a video explaining how the green tractor with two transmissions work. I hope to give the tractor a better name soon. That might be the subject of a future video. But because he specifically asked about a tractor with two transmissions, I'm assuming the question is about the drivetrain. So I thought I would make a video with basically two parts. One part explaining the mechanics of the drivetrain and the second part actually how it operates when you're driving the tractor. So starting from the beginning, the power takeoff on the engine here is a double sheave six inch B pulley, double B belts, and it's also six inch pulley on the wheel horse transmission up here. Right now the I have a block of wood pressing the clutch down so this is free turning. So the reason I have two six inch double B pulleys as I did some research online and that is the amount of surface area I guess you would call it belt surface area that you should have for 16 horsepower. Uh, it's really overkill I'm finding but um, there is an added benefit of it I think. So I have underneath uh, a heavy duty spring that puts back tension on this ATV wheel bearing that runs against the belt. And the, the added benefit I have from having this heavy duty system is, as you may know, when you're going downhill and the transmission is turning faster or wants to turn faster than the engine, you could build up a little slack on the back side and actually the belt will start to slip. And um, so one of the downsides of a belt slip clutch system is um, you could start just rolling downhill out of control. So uh, yeah, one benefit of the, this heavy, heavy, maybe overbuilt system is that, that hasn't been a problem for me, at least not so far. Okay, on this side, looking in at the, this is the pulley coming off the engine. Um, just up there, maybe too dark, you could see the back of the ATV wheel bearing. So this is the clutch pedal, and it's really simple. It's just an angled piece of metal on a little homemade bracket and connected by a cable to this arm which runs back to the holder of the ATV bearing. So if I remove the block of wood. So as I press the clutch, it just moves this arm. And let me see if you can get some light in there. Sorry, it's a tight space, so it's hard to get a view here. As I press the clutch. On the original wheel horse, there was a shaft that came out here that was used for the wheel horse brake, and I took advantage of that shaft instead of using it for a brake as the power takeoff. So as I explained in the build video where the uh, axles used to come off the wheel horse transmission, I actually cut that axle tube off and removed all the differential gears within the transmission. So now um, power comes out of the wheel horse transmission into this heavy duty roller chain and goes down into the input 
of the Model A transmission. And the Model A transmission then would operate just like it would in the car. Um, it goes straight from input through the transmission to just a, a simple U-joint which is directly connected to the rear end. For operation of the tractor I use the wheel horse transmission uh, as basically high and low range and the Model A transmission for shifting on the go just like you would any other tractor. So with the wheel horse transmission in first gear, which I have the gear pattern written here because I have a hard time remembering it, I would consider that low range and now on the Model A transmission I have gears 1 through 3 as well as reverse. Um, with this in first gear, the wheel horse transmission and the Model A transmission in first gear, the tractor creeps along very slowly. I like this very slow speed. One, because it's cool to just have something that can creep so slow. But I also use this sometimes when I'm working off the tractor. I work by myself quite a bit and in low low I could basically get off the tractor and do other things. It's creeping along so slowly I could watch it. So sometimes I could have say a bucket of water or a barrel of water on a carry-all and as the tractor is creeping along I can get off and scoop out buckets of water to my garden or something. the wheel horse transmission in third gear this is like high range and this is uh, this, the range I use the most so again I have uh, in high range I have three forward gears here and as well as reverse of course so in three three that's my top speed So the wheel horse transmission, you need to be at a dead stop in order to shift this. But the Model A transmission, you can shift on the fly. And in fact, when I'm in third gear in the wheel horse transmission, the belt makes some funny noises if I take off directly in second or third. So I tend to take off in first gear and just shift through the gears in order to get up into my highest speed, 3-3. Three, three. So ordinarily to back up, I would shift the Model A transmission into reverse. But that's actually pretty slow. Model A cars were meant to back up pretty slow, I guess. If I'm doing a lot of backing up, like all the way across the yard, um, to back up a little faster, what I can do is put the wheel horse transmission in reverse and then use first, second, and third for reverse. And um, since
since I need speed when I do this, I tend to use reverse on the wheel horse transmission and third gear on the Model A transmission. There's quite a bit of overlap between the gears. I haven't figured out exactly which gears are the fastest and slowest other than 1-1 one, one, and 3-3. Three, three. Uh, if I was going to engineer my own transmission, I would really only need the wheel horse transmission here to have 1 and 3. Although I do find the reverse to be quite useful. Um, as for 2, I do use it sometimes just because it's there. But it really is all within what I the speeds I could get in one or three. Because there's two transmissions, you probably already considered the fact that I also have reverse, reverse. And this ends up being the slowest forward creeping gear, but I tend not to use it.